Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, this is Nelly Deutsch and this is our weekly teaching with technology on WizIQ. Today we're going to be uh, talking about uh, Google Drive and two new Google Drive features. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from, what time it is and anything else you'd like to add. I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining. And I see that we've got some new members. That's great. All right. So uh, this may be your first time on uh, WizIQ. Let me know in the chat box if this is your first time in a live online class such as this. All right. So we've got second timers. Okay, so the next stage is actually to schedule. If you were here last time, I mentioned the fact that it's really important to practice and practice fearlessly without uh, worrying about anything. All right, one of my uh, favorite these days, I would say, favorite uh, tools in the classroom, in and out of the classroom, with my students is Google Drive. And the reason that I use Google Drive is because I find that that's the only thing that is helping improve my student writing. It's the only way that I can connect with them one-on-one -on -one and have them connect with one another for collaborative writing. How many of you have uh, used Google Drive? for yourself or uh, in your classes. Oh, you haven't. All right, you need to have a Gmail account or an organizational account that uses uh, Google Apps. So how many of you have Gmail accounts? If you can add that in the chat box, do you have a Gmail account? because that's the first step. Oh, you use, uh, okay, great, Julia. And you like it. I don't know anybody who uses Google Drive and doesn't like it. It just seems like there's so much you can do with it. And the fact that we are social beings, we love collaborating, and it makes life so much easier when you can work with someone else on a presentation, on a proposal, on, a book, a draft, and Google Drive certainly has a lot to offer. Oh, great, Julie. So I'm, not, I'm glad you're using it for writing. Okay, today uh, I'm going to talk about two new features for Google Drive. So um, I'm not sure whether you've used them before, but um, let's get started. All right, so people will be coming in. As you noticed, um, you can copy the chat um, before you go. Just I'll give you time at the end. If you uh, just check for it now, it says copy chat. Does everybody see that? Just let me know with a smiley if you see copy chat. Okay, great. Okay, to make sure that you copy it before you go and then you can paste it anywhere you can also uh, listen to the recordings and also get uh, the links. During the recordings, everything in the chat box is uh, hyperlinked, so that's fine. All right, so take a look. I've added uh, three, actually, three links. One is to a new app called Kzena. And the other one is called Move Note. Okay, so I'm going to be referring to those as we go. And um, I've also added a tutorial. Actually, the tutorial, the PowerPoint presentation. No, I didn't add that. But I added a Google document, Google Drive document, a Word document. All right, so let's get started and uh, we'll refer to that 
later on. All right, so Google Drive for me is a lot, as I said. I, um, I collaborate with colleagues on so many things, conference proposals, books. I organize uh, not only uh, conferences and the presenters, they choose their times, I, I, you know, sometimes I think that uh, I would not be able to move through my day without Google Drive. All right, so Google Drive is really a collaborative way to connect with people through writing, but not only through writing. It also allows students to peer review or at least to get a chance to connect with other students when I'm uh, providing feedback and learn from everybody's uh, mistakes and my corrections. So it allows them to connect with the other students and with the teacher. It also provides students with skills. They develop skills, skills of organization and teamwork. So not only writing skills, but other skills as well. A little bit about me, uh, very briefly, I have a doctorate in uh, educational leadership specializing in curriculum and uh, technology, instruction and learning. I've been teaching EFL for over 30 years and academic writing is one of my, uh, I guess, uh, passions. I've been using computer-based learning since uh, the late 80s, early 90s. And the reason I resorted to technology was because um, I wanted to reach my students. And I felt that uh, I couldn't do it in the classroom. I couldn't reach everybody. And that really bothered me. Well, what does... Google Drive provide? Well, it provides students with ownership. And I think that's really important. It is also um, one of their favorite gadgets because they can bring their own devices to class. In other words, my students are even more excited about Google Drive because they can use their mobile devices which um, is mostly their cell phones, their smartphones in the classroom. Those that don't have smartphones or don't have the internet, an internet pack on their smartphones, use the computers in the computer lab. And uh, the numbers are getting smaller and smaller. More and more uh, of my students are using their cell phones and they love it because as I said, it's their favorite gadget and they feel a sense of ownership when they can hold you know their mobile phones and use them for their writing okay they get a kick out of it so i'm really happy about that and i'm finding that it's a lot easier to work with them uh, because they have their gadgets other rather than to work with the computers by the way how many of you uh use or allow your students to use cell phones in, in your classes? Well, <laughs> tell you the truth, it's not allowed. It's, it's kind of funny because uh, the principal at our school is also a technologist, uh, educational technologist, and she use, she's a math teacher and she uses it in her classes. We have a lot of smartphones. The whole school is really uh, wired up. Um, so she uses it. You're not allowed to use it in a regular classroom, but you are allowed if you use it uh, the way I use it and the way she uses it. So um, it depends, all right? <laughs> it really does. Uh, one of the values of uh, using mobile devices is that it connects students. They really connect socially. And in this case, it's for learning. Oh, you can use it also. I use it in the computer lab too. Some, in, the, in the classroom, I hardly use it. 
Um, and they're having fun. That's the idea. They're, they're, and they don't have to sit down. I think that's really important for them. I teach high school. They don't like to sit down behind chairs. So this gives them a chance to move around. They feel so comfortable that, you know, I find them sitting on tables and I don't allow that. I just find it offensive for somebody to sit on a table. But, but that's just a sign that they feel very much at home. And I think that's, uh, that's important. Uh, first of all, you can use, uh, I don't know if you've got Androids or uh, if you use Apple iPhones, but with the Androids, all they have to do is go into Google Play. My students have a mix. Some of them, I think it's probably half-half, but I think most of them have, uh, seem to have iPhones. Um, and, and they're so proud, you know, they, they, they help one another. It becomes a really, really social uh, learning environment. So for the Android, it's Google Play. That's where you can get Google Drive. And um, for the iPhone, it's an apps. Okay, iPhones have apps. So this is just something that you should be aware of, but your students will help you. I think that's wonderful too, because um, it really makes everybody uh, very, very equal in the classroom. There's no hierarchy. When it comes to cell phones, it kind of equalizes everything. The best way that I know to use Google Drive, because Google Drive changes. If you've used Google Drive, Julie has, you'll know that it used to be Google Docs. And Google Docs was quite different from Google Drive. And even if you have a Gmail account, you'll notice that it changes. It doesn't look the same. Google keeps changing the layout and they don't ask us. They don't even ask us if we like it. Uh, they just do, you know, and all of a sudden one day you'll open your uh, Gmail account and you'll find that instead of having everything at the top, all the headings for uh, YouTube that they've just added a couple of months ago, you'll find everything at the top right. So, um, that's part of learning. That's how life is. We're continually learning. Nothing stays the same and neither does technology. And Google just goes and does what is very natural. It allows us to uh, accept changes, whether we like it or not. Um, you mentioned Dropbox. I have Dropbox on my Moodle. I don't use it extensively because um, it's just for storing mainly. And I like the openness. I feel the Dropbox is very closed. Maybe it's just me. And it doesn't allow for openness where with Google, I feel that it's a lot uh, more open. And Prezi, I don't know. I never, I have Prezi. I even have a pro. Um, but um, again, you know, it um, doesn't allow for collaboration. I think they're working on it right now. The best way to acquaint yourself is to keep using it. If you keep using it and there's some changes, it'll, it'll be fine. You'll manage. All right. Some of the changes are these. Step one. If you notice, this is new. It's at the top right of your Gmail account and it's just these little it looks like an apps the idea is that they've put everything here instead of having them at the top now it's here next to uh, google plus which is also in there so everything's in there this is your alert this is your share and that's the photo at the top right so this is actually the top right side of your google gmail account and everything is in here if you click on uh, this part. Here there's YouTube, Maps, Play if you've got an Android, the News, Gmail, and of course Google Drive. There's a lot more here, but we're not going to go into that right now. Okay, next. If you open up uh, number three, Okay, you'll get settings. 
under settings, I don't know if you've seen this before, I suggest you go through everything, but this also changes. Everything changes every couple of weeks with, uh, with Google. So number one is convert uploaded files to Google Docs format. And the other one is convert text from uploaded PDF and image files. Now these, this is really important information. And then there's also confirm settings before each upload. Notice number two is your manage apps. These are the apps that you have. Now I don't know how many apps you have in your Google Drive, but uh, they're working developing apps all the time. It's not Google, it's uh, individuals and organizations that are doing it for them. So let's take a look at, we'll take a look at some of the apps later on, but let's take a look at step number two. Step number two is to create a document or as it's called a drive. Okay. And notice I've got mine set up. My drive is set up in folders. Okay. So if I click on create, I'll get the different kinds of files. I can also upload a file from my system. Okay. By going into number one and then files, I can also upload a whole folder from my computer. Now what's nice about all this is that you can organize it into folders and these are the different documents. Okay, this, the blue is the Word document, the presentation. I hate this color. I wish they would change it. That's the presentation, spreadsheet and form go together. That's registration form or research. I use this for my uh, research. Actually, I do all my research on Google Drive. It used to be Google Docs. Um, and of course, there's drawing. Now, these are some of the apps that I've added to this concept board, Dooku Sign, Fusion. There are a lot more of these HTML. Okay, this is for the HTML codes, loop collage, and there's much more. So you can get all kinds of apps. Some are educational, some are not. Yes, you've got to get a Gmail account. Um, it, it's just amazing. Okay, notice here again, everything is organized. So your students will learn to organize. Well, I, I became, I think, more organized as a result myself. Notice here the plus. Okay, that's for a folder. Okay, number one, as I said, is, well, you tell me, what is number one? Let's see if you, uh, if you were paying attention. Okay, or if you know this. Number one. By the way, all my other emails, I also have, they're all forwarded to my Gmail account. So I have one account where everything goes in there. So let's see, number one. Well, it's quite easy because the color. I'm sorry that your server was down, but you came back really fast. That's good. So number one, who's going to take a guess? Well, it says document, you write. It's actually a Word document, okay? And number two is a PowerPoint presentation. Now, number three doesn't have that many themes. So if you're going to create a uh, form, you know, to be filled in, don't be surprised if it's very primitive looking. I'm waiting for Google to do something about that. Uh, there's no publisher. No, publisher is now gone, actually. I think that, I don't even know, does uh, Office have, publish, still have a publisher? I'm not that keen on Office because I'm on a Mac and I use uh, Office for Mac. So it's a bit different. Now, number four means that you've got more apps that you can connect with. And I suggest you look at them. I'm only interested in education, so I go into the education apps, but there are others. 
Okay, so you can see that when you create a Word document, you'll see the colors, which is very easy. And I think Google is doing a wonderful job. They keep changing it, of course. There used to be an arrow here. It's not here anymore. It was, I was teaching this a few weeks ago and I said, well, there's an arrow, click on it and go. It's not there anymore. So what you teach today, you have to uh, say, well, that was, this is today, tomorrow it may look completely different. And um, if you don't mind that, then you're going to be an excellent uh, learner because it just opens up your mind when they keep changing things and you're open to it. So number one is an indication that it's a Word document. Number two, I have to add a title. Okay, it's very hard to share if you don't add a title. It just messes it up. Uh, students at first don't add titles, but they quickly learn that it's a good idea to add a title. Notice there is an editor here, and this is number three is the uh, text area. Okay, again, number one, number two, you need to name text. Now notice here uh, that you give it a title and you can rename it and it's okay. Okay, don't forget to click on okay. Now notice here there are lots of things that uh, are under file. You should check them out. They're really, really good. You can uh, con convert the file to PDF, and which is really nice. And it's all free, of course. You can print it and uh, you use it like a regular editor. Okay, there are also other features. Under insert, there are also a lot of um, good things. All right, so let's get to teaching. All right, since I teach English as a foreign language, notice here, uh, this is, let's say, what a student wrote. Okay, the student wrote this. Now, everybody knows that there is an error, right? So, um, do you see the mistake? I don't think I've ever seen that mistake before. I just made it up. But the student may not see it. <laughs> the student may not see it. You know, it could be a typo. And sometimes we, I make a lot of typos because I think Google and other, I think the Android too, they keep changing it to what they think you want and you don't want. So uh, technology is also helping us make typos. So you really have to be careful and you can't write too quickly because things change. You write one thing and then you say, oh my gosh, did I write that? So, you know, I don't tell them you made a mistake. I could just say, you know, there's a typo. Right, very good. So you did that. All right, so what do I do? First of all, students need to share their work. They share it with me and they share it. You can decide if they work in teams, they share it with uh, their fellow students, whoever's on the team, they can share it with a buddy or a few buddies. Okay, you decide. All right, and then you can add, what I've been doing is just adding a comment. You know, you go into the comment box and that's it. You highlight and you add your comments. Okay, and um, that's fine. This is how you share but I'm going to show you something else today. This is how you share, you go into the share. Number one, this is the link that you're going to be sharing. There's always a link, even if it's private. Okay, number three means that you can change it. it, doesn't have to be private, but if you make it private, it means that only that person that you share it with will be able to open it. You can also share it if you make it public or someone with a link. You can share it on Google+, Facebook, Twitter. All right. Number four, this is where you write the email address. And it doesn't have to be Gmail. It could be another address, email. Number five, make sure that you go into this because if you're going to give someone editing rights, they can take it away from you unless you make sure that you're the owner. So number five is very important. And don't forget number six is done. 
if anyone else, unless the published link would be still be able to edit it. No, no, no. You decide whether you want them to edit it or not. Okay. You may want them to just view it. There's view. You have a choice. There's edit. You can allow them to edit. You can allow them to view it, or you can allow them to comment on it. Okay. You decide. All right, so if you're going to share it, there are three options. One, you can share it publicly with the world. There's no sign-in required. Uh, number two, anyone with a link. Only those with the link can access it, and you decide whether they can edit, view it, or only comment. But you can only decide on one. <laughs> you can't decide on two. I'm waiting for Google to change that. Because if they can view it, they can comment. And if they can't comment, they can edit. It's kind of funny, okay, uh, with anyone with a link. With a private, it's a lot better. Okay, so here again, in number three, because the sign in is required, it's a lot easier to give editing rights and have them comment on it as well. Okay, and then you save it. Don't forget to save. Now, this is the part that I told you to be careful. Okay, the change. It says editors will be allowed to add people and change the permissions. You don't want to be locked out of your own document. Okay, so make sure that you click on it. Notice editors are allowed to add people and change the permissions. I always click on this part. Only the owner can change permissions. Okay, so don't give up your rights and then save it. Okay, something to remember. Okay, so this is where you add the emails. You can add as many emails as you want, and this is exactly it. Abdel Del Jabbar. Okay, this is where you have a choice, can edit. And if you open up the flap, it'll say can edit can comment, can view, but only one of them, not all three. And then you can send yourself a copy or paste the item that you're sending in the email. You can also send a message to all the people that are on your list of collaborators. Okay. And here it is again. Okay. Um, you can not notify people. Now here, under the can edit, as I said, it's either only one. So either they can edit, they can comment, or they can view, but not all three. And that's kind of annoying for me. All right, comment box. The comment box, and this you have to tell your students, will not work unless you have something there. Okay, and you have to highlight it. If you don't highlight it, or if there's nothing there, you can, the comment box will be hidden. You see here it's hidden. It'll only become visible when there's something there. Now you can click on notifications. You click on comment to get the notifications. Notifications are very important. You have to tell your students about that. Even though right now it's not working too well, I hate to say this, but it worked better. I think um, Google Drive is making a lot of changes. So actually they're messing up some things. <laughs> not nice to say, but they're messing up. So the notifications is not working like a wiki these days. Okay. Um, so be aware of that. But the notifications used to work until the last couple of days. It used to work really well. So that you get notified every time somebody, like a wiki. How many of you are familiar with wikis? Like Wikipedia, uh, wiki spaces, any kind of wiki. If you could just give me a thumbs up if you're familiar with a wiki. I love wikis. That's why I love Google Drive because it's a wiki. It acts like a wiki. So every time somebody writes on a wiki, and I've uh, done a lot of work on wikis, you get notified, which is wonderful. I love being notified every time somebody writes. But right now it's kind of, uh, there's a bug on Google Drive. It's not, you're not really getting notified all the time. Okay, so be aware of that. 
All right, insert. This is the comments that I was telling you about. You click on comments. You can find them here on the top right, or you can find them in the editor. Okay, under insert. So two places. Now notice it's grayed out. The comments box is grayed out. And that's very annoying for students. They say, but I can't write comments is grayed out. Of course you can't. You have to highlight, which is also kind of, okay, I hope that'll change. But notice how many things you have under insert, image, link, you can hyperlink, equations, you can draw. Okay, tables are also good. There's footnotes, special characters, page numbers, page, lots of things. And I'm sure this list is going to get even better. All right, so let's get back to our sentence. Once I write a sentence, before I even highlight it, the comment becomes unhidden. It's not hidden anymore. Okay, so uh, knives, you're working tomorrow? Somebody's working tomorrow. All right, so comment, there's a comment, it's now on. Don't go because there's something really interesting that you're going to see. Okay, so comments, I can now add the comments, really important. I thrive on the comments. Okay, so here's our sentence. Now you can comment, this is the comment box, notice. This resolve thing is kind of confusing for students, the word resolve, but you write your comment in the chat, you save it, and then they can reply to your comments. And then when things are resolved, you click on resolve or you can delete the whole thing. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to show you um, something that not everybody knows okay these are the apps okay i want to get the apps what you do is you go into your document okay this is the document you click on the right of the mouse and these are the apps that's how you get the apps okay so here i am i click on the right of the mouse and i get open with under open with okay notice what i get and i'll show you this in a minute I get all these options. These are the apps. So if you click on the right of a document, you get the apps. Let me show you that because it's kind of confusing here and you may not get it. All right, so I created a video for you to make it easier. Are you ready? I'm gonna show you this video. I hope everybody gets uh, YouTube, otherwise, um, Okay, here it comes. Make it larger. There we go. Can you hear? All right, so uh, Google is changing, just like anything else is, and I think that's awesome. So it takes time, and we need to adjust, but isn't that great that we're able to learn to be flexible? For example, the layout. Right now, take a look at the top right. That's where everything is. If you hover your mouse over it, you'll get exactly what it is. So we've got uh, apps. Click on it, and you get all these. Now they're called apps. Google+. Plus. G search, YouTube, and so on. Play. Uh, your Gmail is right there. And Drive. Of course, there's a lot more, but I'm interested in the Drive. There's even more if you want to go down there. But let's go into uh, Drive. And these are my documents. I'm going to go into this one, click on the right of the mouse, and then I get open with either left or right, whatever comes. And then I'm going to go down to Move Note. Let's click on that. This is really exciting because this is a video. And who doesn't like videos these days, especially to appear on one, right? So um, I'm going to uh, provide feedback. 
on the sentence. Okay, there's the sentence, and I'm going to record my feedback. So here goes. Are you ready? All right. So the sentence is wonderful, but it's got two spelling mistakes and it's grammatically incorrect. Could you please fix it and get back to me if you have any questions? Use uh, move mode. In other words, now use your mic. All right, so let's go there now. We're going to save this. Okay, wait a few seconds while it's initializing. All right, you see that it's uh, getting ready. Notice uh, it's Google, so there's feedback on the right, and there it is. Now, notice you can get the link. You can also embed this, which is really awesome. All right, so let's take a look at some of the options. If I click over here, I've got embed. Isn't that amazing? Technology is just getting better and better for teachers and students. Viewing statistics, edit slides. If I wanted to do slides, I just did feedback, delete, and so on. I can email it. Look at all these options. Change the background layout. It's not exciting. I can change the layout. I can do anything. I can have a blackboard, dark, uh, red. All right, change. Okay, so uh, <laughs> how's that for change? I don't think I like that. How about blackboard? Well, I'm not really calling it keen on blackboard, but let's see what that, oh my gosh, that's really dark. It sure is black. All right, so I don't like black. I don't like red. I don't like any of these. So um, what do I go with? I think uh, maybe red. I'm sure they'll have uh, other options very, very soon. So let's go with the red. All right, daring, isn't it? You can change it as it goes. Add a link button to the end of the presentation. Let's do that. All right. And then I can add a link here. What link? Well, maybe the link to the Google document or uh, to this class that I'm going to be giving, which is a good idea, isn't it? So let me do that now. Give a link to the live class that um, I'll be giving. In order to do that, uh, let me get the class details. There they are. There is the class. So uh, let's go back. Okay, so let's add the link here. There's the link to the live class button. Well, um, this is a webinar, actually. People like the word webinar. I like class. Webinar on Google Drive for student writing. I just love what uh, Google Drive's doing, what Google's doing. Student writing. And that's it. Did I spell it correctly? Yes. All right. Save changes and listen. Okay, here we go. There, I want you to get a full view here of everything. Okay, it's down here as well. Slides. You can also notice here, you can... Um, download this as a PDF file, which is nice too. So the sentence is wonderful, but it's got two spelling mistakes and it's grammatically incorrect. Could you please fix it and get back to me if you have any questions? Use uh, move mode. In other words, now use your mic. All right, so let's Notice uh, there, isn't that a great webinar? <laughs> okay, and that comes up, you click on it and you go to the link. I think this is amazing. All right, so let's rename this uh, Google or tutorial. Okay, that was, uh, <laughs> that's, okay, that's uh, a little bit about right. the apps, okay? okay? And it. the that's apps is called, called I love this. Look Move at this. Note, on it. I think, which is a, not a bad you, name. Okay, MoveNote. I suggest you try right. it. And it's amazing. And other apps are going to be coming it's in. There used to be an app called Drive Thank Voice Recorder, watching. but I, I think now. they gave up. It doesn't work anymore. But there is something else. Okay, and you can go into the options and view these apps. Okay, the next one, this is the Move Note that I was telling you about.
and that I showed you. But there's another one called, look at this crazy name, called Kezena or Kezena or whatever. Okay, would you like to know more about this one? Has anyone, anybody heard of Kezena? Just let me know in the chat if you've heard of it. It's a crazy name. My students always, you know, think that I'm making up these names. They can't believe that these are real names. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go into, um, I also prepared a video for you. Okay. Here's a, a video on this on Kezena. All right. So uh, this is the other video. Are you ready? This is Nelly, and I'd like to take you through Google Drive and some great features for helping your students and collaborating with everyone, okay, including your students and getting them to work together. So let me take you there. First of all, I'm going to go into this area here called Apps, click on it, and then I get these. All right, now I'm interested in Google Drive, so let me go into Google Drive. Okay, here I am. Now I'm going to go into a document, this particular one, and I'm going to click on the right of my mouse. Okay, as I do that, okay, it allows me to open with, and I'm going to start with Kezana. All right, Kezana, there it is. It's an audio. I can use my microphone to respond to my students and feedback, and they can do the same to me, and they can also do right, to each other. So it's not teacher-student, but it's also student-student. All right, so this is what I've done already. As you notice, I can highlight different things with this. Okay, but I'm just going to, uh, instead of going through the audio, I'm simply going to click on here, and this is something that I've already added. So let me go in there now. Okay, and you'll hear it. Here we go. I'm clicking on the arrow over here. All right, there are two spelling mistakes and two grammar mistakes. One that you made in your sentence and one that I made in mine. See if you can find them. All right, now if you're wondering what happened here, uh, let me uh, just take you back a few steps so you get the general idea of what is going on. So let me go back into the document. Okay, here's the document. All right, and this is the sentence. As you can see, it's wrong. What I did was, okay, I uh, highlighted this part, and then I went to the top here, top left, into the document, as I showed you before. This is the document. I clicked on the right of the mouse, and then I went into Open With, Open With Kezena. All right, there it is. I click on that. And then notice what happens. Okay, it's loading and it goes back to the old document. But if I want to add a new one, notice it says untitled document because that's what I did. But if I want to get the different versions, I can go here where it says versions and I can create a new version. All right, so let's do that now, create a new version based on this. It says this document has changed sync. All right, so this is the one, and I'm going to add a new version. All right, so uh, let me do that right now, okay, by going into it. And notice that I can continue adding feedback. 
All right, so let me uh, continue adding feedback by going into the microphone, clicking on record. I can also uh, add verbal feedback. I can text the feedback and I can also add a link. Okay, but I'm not going to do that now. But let me go into the recording. I click on record. It asks for uh, my information. Okay, so uh, let me do that now. Click on this, and then it says click again to record. And then I record. You can yeah, see it. Yeah, Zena is here. amazing. Yeah, it's I really simple. Four. Uh, this is stop. exactly so uh, what you now. need for okay. your students then, if you uh, want to help them improve their writing because students like relate record. to uh, and audio. Then I record. You can see it. And to it text together. They, they like the I, multi. Uh, simply, uh, media so and not just, just having one it's so listening to your Absolutely voice they can amazing. also really because it's this. english language right, learning so, the I fact know. that they're going to be You'll responding to us. you I by understand. voice they're going to use the language so it's it's using different skills it's not only writing skills listening skills they're they're using all of them okay and you're using them so they're listening to you and so on so it's really a perfect uh tool for teachers Kzena is perfect. The other tool, the Move Note, is for uh, creating presentations. It has other uh, values, okay? But Kzena is really feedback. It's audio feedback. Very humanizing. You said it exactly, um, and and I think it's really exciting. Techno Google at least is really thinking of teachers. Uh, when it comes to all of these wonderful Google Drive applications. And that's what they are. They're, they're all applications. So what you need with Kezana, and students have this on their cell phones. That's what's wonderful. They can use, remember at the beginning I showed you, they can use their mobile phones for this. Right there, they can, you know what, my students do it during breaks, they do it on the way home, they do it on the subway, they do it everywhere on the bus, and so on, while they're walking home. So they've got their, instead of texting their friends, they do their homework <laughs> as they walk, and they're so excited about it, all right, so it's nice to see them excited so they they've got their microphone on their cell phone so there's no need to have a standalone microphone and they're using this this is exactly what they're using okay this is uh, a headset and they all have it so um it's it's exciting it really is okay again you click on the green and it just goes on and on with the feedback back and forth um i think this is uh Absolutely amazing. And there is the link. Okay, you get a link with it. So you can share the link with your students. You can just send it to them. And if you've, uh, okay, it's amazing. You have to try it. You have to try it. All right, so again, how do you do it? The right of the mouse on the document open with okay that's how it's done and you'll be able you have this powerpoint presentation at the top if you go to the top of the chat you'll see it there all right so let me uh, show you a little bit about the organizational skills that students develop i mentioned that at the beginning but not only students <laughs> i've developed some really great uh, organizational skills as well so number one all your documents you can put in a folder and you can have different colors. Okay, I don't have time, but um, you know, having different colors uh, is really nice for the eye. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that the one number five, the one in the middle, okay, is uh, for a book. Okay, it's a form for teachers who want to write a book. If you're interested in writing a book, uh, I'm editing a book on teaching with technology, if you're interested. And this is the form that you will have to fill in. Number on the left, there is a book chapter on connecting online. And on the right is what I provide 
the uh, writers, okay, the writers of the chapter, the teachers who are collaborating on this book, or they're not all teachers, but most of them are teachers. This is uh, the form they they also fill this in. So I share a Google Word document with them. That that's how I connect. I don't know how to connect other, you know, and and going to somebody's house or you know having face to face meetings just doesn't do it. Okay, so number one is you create a folder. Okay, you give it a name. Number two. Number three, I've called this a new folder, and this is where it is. Okay, this is my new folder. It's that simple. Okay, these are the folders. You can see I've chosen some colors for you. This is my Connecting Online book. The book is out, by the way, if you're interested in purchasing it. It's also um, available on uh, iPads, for iPads. So it's called Connecting Online for Instruction and Learning. It's on Amazon and it's teachers. Okay, it's the conference that we give. There's a conference. Uh, this will be the fifth conference. We've been, um, I've been organizing these conferences since 2009 and you're invited to join and present. Knives, I think you're presenting, aren't you, uh, this year? Uh, so uh, after the conference, uh, each presenter, if they wish, not every presenter, uh, is may want to uh, write a chapter for the book. There's also the ELT MOOC that's taking place now with Jason R. Levine. He's uh, organizing that. So there's a folder for that. There's a folder called Courses. There's the International Writing Exchange, if those of you are interested. It's uh, for high school and college students that connect on a Moodle, one of my Moodle websites, and the project is International Writing Exchange. There's also my doctoral students that uh, have their writing, and there's Wiki. These are just uh, four. I have a lot more <laughs> folders than that, but that's just a way to organize. In the folders, um, you have uh, your Google Drive, your documents, and that's it. So questions, I'd like to thank you uh, for joining and um, questions. Okay, uh, first of all, the link. Does there, anybody have the link? I'd like to share that. Oh, Thomas, I didn't see you come in. I know that you were gonna come, but I didn't see you, glad to see you. Okay, does anybody have the link to the